Typical heart surgery is done by making an incision in the midline uh, and uh, opening up the breastbone uh, and having full access to the heart. That's the way we've been doing heart surgery for 40 something years, even longer. Uh, and, but that is the traditional approach. Uh, and I think probably within the last five or 10 years, there's been a movement to try to do this with smaller incisions. And uh, ostensibly, there's a number of benefits. Uh, I think a lot of it started out to be uh, uh, people wanted uh, cosmesis. Uh, but uh, the reality of it is, is that when you do a big incision on some patients, that, you know, the breastbone, it hurts a little bit more. They're in the hospital a little bit longer. And if we can do some of these heart operations with smaller incisions, they're in the operating room for a little bit less period of time, less hospital time, and uh, the recovery time is much uh, quicker. Most notably uh, are things that are related to valve disease, uh, both the aortic valve and the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, actually all four valves of the heart can be approached this way. It's less, uh, less, uh, more, less commonly used for coronary artery disease, which is a very classic operation for heart surgery, coronary artery bypass, um, just because you need to get to all surfaces of the heart. And so if you're in one small little incision on the side to get all the way over to the left side of the heart, it's impossible to do. So through a small incision over here, or there's other kind of form for us of these small incisions, you can access a good amount of the inside of the heart. So you can fix holes in the heart, atrial septal defects, ventricular septal defects. You can repair or replace all the major valves. Uh, there's all different types of procedures that we can do on the surface of the heart as well. Uh, but mostly, uh, I think the biggest impact is going to be related to valve disease. We use uh, some traditional and non-traditional instruments to enable us to work in small spaces. Obviously, we can't get our hands in there, so we need to have tools that uh, can work through small spaces. We have good video imaging that enables us to see uh, a, a lot of the details that we need to see uh, uh, in order to do our, our, our uh, operations. The most common operation right now is usually related to the mitral valve, repairing the mitral valve, replacing the mitral valve. We always try to repair the val mitral valve if we can, if, it's, if you have a, a valve that's leaking uh, called mitral regurgitation or mitral valve prolapse is associated with that. The main pumping chamber of the heart is called the left ventricle, and there's a door in to, the, to that chamber, and then there's a door out. The door in is called the mitral valve, and that's bringing blood that has just freshly come up from the lungs and has oxygen and is going to the main pumping chamber, the left ventricle, which is going to squeeze and send the blood all to your brain, to your gut, to your legs. In order to get out of the uh, main pumping chamber of the heart, you have to go across another valve called the aortic valve. And, um, you know, valves are, are meant to be one-way structures. Blood flow is supposed to go one way and not the other. So you can theoretically have two problems with a door. One is it either doesn't open well or it doesn't close well. And so it turns out that the two most common diseases of the heart valve is a mitral valve that doesn't close well, thereby it leaks a lot, or an aortic valve, which is the door leaving the heart, is rusty. It doesn't want to open well, so it's very narrow. That's called aortic stenosis. And those are probably the two most common things that we see in valvular heart disease in general, but also that are very uh, amenable to this form and to this technique of uh, repair through the small incisions. Uh, and, uh, and that's where we're using it most, most frequently. Uh, we certainly can use it through uh, other valves as well.